With the 4-2 Buffalo Bills playing host to the 1-6 Miami Dolphins this Sunday, Brian Flores' team has an opportunity to earn their second victory and split the season series with the favorites in the division. Miami has struggled mightily through the first half of the season and has been surrounded by trade rumors and whispers of coaches, general managers being on the hot seat. Publicly, the players are ignoring the noise, and that has to remain true through this week against one of the toughest opponents in the AFC. The Bills are coming off of a bye week following their heartbreaking Week 6 loss to the Titans. Buffalo will be looking to put a beatdown on Miami again as they did in their first meeting of the season, and they have the talent and coaching to get it done. Here are five keys for the Dolphins to secure a win against the Bills. Contain Josh Allen. It's easier said than done, obviously, but Allen is such a killer with his legs. Since entering the league, he's been one of the best in short yardage situations. Instead of handing the ball to Zach Moss or Devin Singletary in close, Allen is likely keeping it himself and bully his way into the end zone. Outside of the red zone, the Dolphins have to keep him inside the pocket and spy him when they can to make sure that they can limit that threat to run. Xavier Howard needs to do what he did last week. Howard looked like his all-pro self last week against the Falcons. He held his matchups to just one reception for 28 yards on eight targets for a remarkable 2.1 passer rating. The lone reception was a perfectly placed ball to Kyle Pitts on the final drive. In this game, Howard will likely be shadowing Stefan Diggs who is one of the best in the league. Diggs' root running and hands make him an elite receiver that will require Howard to play the same way he did last week. Allen is a good quarterback, but if his top receiver is blanketed, he can be forced into making a mistake. Get smart play from Tua Tungavailoa. Sean McDermott's defense is one of the best. They're the top team against the pass, 180.5 yards per game, and sixth against the run, 89.7 yards per game. Miami has a pass-heavy offense despite trying to get their backs more involved in recent weeks. Tunga Vailoa has been extremely productive since his return from injured reserve. The one thing that's been a killer has been the turnovers. If he can limit those mistakes, the Dolphins have a much better chance. Stop committing stupid, costly penalties. The most recent example that comes to mind is Austin Jackson's hold last week on a third and one that pushed the offense back to a third and eleven. Tunga Vailoa and the unit failed to convert and were forced to punt. That can't be happening in this game. Because of the obvious talent gap between Buffalo and Miami, the Dolphins will have to play nearly perfect football. They can't shoot themselves in the foot over and over again as they have at points this season. Fix the second quarter problem. It's going to take a complete effort to beat the Bills. The Dolphins can't win by playing 45 minutes of good football. This year the Dolphins are the worst team in the NFL in the second quarter scoring just 1.3 points per second quarter. Buffalo, on the other hand, is scoring 11.7 points per second quarter. Tunga Vailoa has also struggled in his own production in the second. His completion percentage drops 21% and his passer rating drops 44 points from his next worst quarter. The coordinators and quarterback have to adjust. Miami Dolphins once again will be looking for a new quarterback. The Miami Dolphins have a quarterback problem and there isn't a big solution on the immediate horizon. With Deshaun Watson more than likely not coming to Miami, has the relationship between Tua Tungavailoa and the Dolphins soured to the point of no return? Miami Dolphins fans want answers. They want to hear Brian Flores say, we are not trading for Deshaun Watson. They also want to see Tua Tungavailoa traded or at the very least believe that he should ask for a trade. As that line of thinking goes, the Dolphins have treated him so poorly that there is no way to recover from it. Stephen Ross has apparently given his O. K. To make a trade provided Watson's legal issues are cleared and there is clarification from Roger Goodell regarding suspension. Both are almost 100% not happening before Tuesday's trade deadline. In other words, this isn't going away anytime soon and next March we will be talking about the big trade for Watson all over again. At that point, the compensation will go up substantially, especially if those legal issues are behind him. None of this leaves Tua in a great place with the Dolphins. If Watson is indeed in Miami sights right now, then Brian Flores simply doesn't see Tua as his future quarterback and that in and of itself should be a reason to trade him now. It also means that the Dolphins will likely head into the offseason looking for a quarterback once again. And frankly, there isn't anyone out there that would make Miami a winning franchise other than Watson. I honestly don't see Watson landing with the Dolphins. So whether through the draft or free agency or via trade, 
the Dolphins who at one point believed Tua Tungavailoa was the end all to their quarterback problems has created yet another quarterback situation full of unwanted drama. Of course maybe everyone is completely wrong. Maybe Brian Flores spoke with Nick Casario who has known for years in Casario asked if he could leak Miami interest in Watson to get another team involved. Maybe the transparency conversations between Flores and Tua are about that. Who knows? Maybe that is the reason why Tua was laughing at all the questions regarding his feelings about all the rumors. Maybe that is why Flores remains so coy about his quarterback situation. Or maybe, the Dolphins just screwed it all up again and will be starting over looking for another quarterback come March or April.